so bizarre why this okay excellent connection now is it working oh it's, it's showing what okay whatever i somehow fixed it yep there it is i see it okay i i tell you i don't get it it's a good thing i don't have millions of people it really is it's a good thing i don't have millions of people that are showing up you know oh yeah there's the alert so the alerts all just came through i so i don't know i don't even know why that made it work i really don't i don't know why that works Whatever, I don't care. That's fine. I'm gonna get going in a second here. I, it's just, <laughs> I a pet peeve of mine is when I don't understand why things don't work. I'm fine when things go wrong. If I understand the root of what's going on, and I can, you know, e even if I can't fix it, if I can identify a reason, it's I can handle it. it or I, I handle it. Handle it makes it sound like I'm having a breakdown. It's not that. But in other words, it doesn't. I'm going to get a quick sip of water. Give me a second here. There we go. It doesn't bother me when things don't work so long as I can identify a cause. That's kind of a big deal to me, is to be able to say, okay, this is why this is going on. And then I can sit there and go, all right, I can look at that next time. or. You know, I can figure it out or whatever. I can, you know, try to work out what's happening. And, you know, when I don't know why, when there's not an identifiable reason why something's not working, it does bug me a little bit, I must admit. But we're not going to draw on that anymore. I'm going to move my keyboard here. I just have to double check to make sure reflector is working. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see here. Uh, reflector. Uh, reflector. That's my fault. There it is, right there. Done. Perfect. All right, let's roll the footage. Do that and that. Oh, there we go. Same difference. You saw the picture for a minute. That's okay. Oh, uh, multi-stream. Okay, and the chat is visible, so we're good. Okay, let's move my iPad into position, and we're going to get going here. So, anyway, as I said on the original but this is now going to become the stream i'm not going to bother with the other ones i'll just cut them out so this is now the official stream so the reason i'm doing this on a monday as opposed to my usual tuesday is because whoa what is all that where did that come from did i miss something oh it's fine whatever uh is because i'm doing a show tomorrow oh that's not an ink brush is I'm doing a show tomorrow with Dr. Doug Bielmeyer. We're going to be talking about one of my, one of a, a, a rare case of a sequel that is, while not as good as the first movie, very, a very, very fun time that I really enjoy watching. I actually just watched it again today because I had to take some uh, notes on it and get some uh, audio clips. And that is Predator 2. Predator 2, the follow-up to one of the great action films that's ever been made, which of course is Predator. And Predator 2 is an interesting film because uh, we did RoboCop 2 already. That was, we did that one. And the reason I'm not even going to bother possibly doing a stream after is our RoboCop 2 discussion, which I think is going to be the shorter of our two discussions, I could be wrong, but I think, uh, that one ran for two and a half hours. So I'm thinking that we might be talking for a while tomorrow. So because of that, I figured I better do my stream today because I don't want to not do it, but I know how long we talk for. So I, which I am very, very grateful for. It's great to be able to talk movies with Doug and, and you know, especially these movies because I do like, I genuinely do like both movies. I like RoboCop 2. I like Predator 2. Of the of the pair, though, just to be honest about it, I think Predator 2 is the better of the two as far as a sequel. Neither one, just to make sure there's no misunderstanding here, neither one can touch the perfection of its first movie. Neither one is anywhere near as good as the first film in the series. In uh, oh yeah, in both cases they did go more than two movies. Uh, yeah, there are there are multiple predators and there are multiple. Ooh, I gotta be careful with this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a second layer. That's okay. 
good. I have a layer to spare. Uh, so yes, there are two. There are multiple Predator films, and there are multiple RoboCop films. I mean, when I say multiple, there's three RoboCop films and then the remake. Honestly, there's only two RoboCop films. Don't even bother talking about the other ones because they're not worth talking about. That remake was not good. I, I can't say it's the worst remake I've ever seen. I have seen worse movies. But it felt very pointless. And that, that actually may be worse than making a bad sequel is making a pointless sequel. That's why I, I go back many, many times to if you're going to do a remake. I mean, don't get me wrong. Robocop 3 is a terrible movie. It is a terrible film in many different ways. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Is Robocop 3 worse than the Robocop remake? Whew, I have to actually... I have to think about that for a minute because... Oh boy, this is a... Oh, we didn't bring this up in the show. I don't know if it'll come up tomorrow. My suspicion is we have so much to cover with Predator 2, this isn't going to come up. So this will be this will be a special little mini thing for anybody who ends up watching this stream. By the time... Apologies for the yawn. The yawns have come back. I don't know why. By the time this stream is... Or be, by the time this video uh, is posted, that show will have long been out. So I'm not too concerned about, you know, this getting out before the show. It's not a problem. But, ooh, I didn't switch things, did I? I didn't. Gotta go. Uh, no, oh, I screwed up. I gotta go back to the other layer. So, the question that popped into my head just now was, what's worse? RoboCop 3 as a sequel or the RoboCop remake? Now, for some people, that answer might seem really easy. You might be sitting there going, oh, it's obviously whichever. Okay? And you're entitled to your opinion, so whatever you think is correct. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to tell you to think like I do. But I had the instant answer, which was, oh, RoboCop 3 is worse. But, you know, I'm not sure it is. And here's why. RoboCop 3, for its many issues, and it has many issues, it is a terrible film. A, pardon my yawn. <sighs> I actually am a little tired today, so at least the yawn sort of makes sense this time. It is a literally unwatchable, f I mean, you, okay, you can watch it. it. It is constructed with a beginning, middle, and end. So it's not, it is not technically unwatchable. It is simply unwatchable from an entertainment perspective, okay? Just so we're making sure we're, you know, using the right terms and all the rest of it here. But in terms of, is it worse than the remake? As incredible as it is, because I did not start off thinking like this, but as incredible as it is for me to say this, I don't think it is. I think RoboCop 3 is better than the RoboCop remake. Now, let me explain my rationale for that. Because on its face, that sounds like the rantings of a crazy person to suggest such a thing. And I'd be lying if I said, and this is not a thing where I'm, I would necessarily bet money on it that most people would agree with me. I think a lot of people would probably disagree with me, but I will give you my reasoning for it. Which is, sequels have a challenge right off the bat. Particularly when sequels are following a great movie. If you make a sequel to a movie that's okay, it's an easier journey to make because you're not coming off of a beloved film, right? So making a sequel to, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, I don't know, Napoleon Dynamite. I know Napoleon Dynamite was really popular. What's a movie that did okay? What's a movie that did okay? Well, whatever. Imagine one that did all right. Big Trouble in Little China. That's a good example. Now, look, I love that movie. I love Big Trouble in Little China. I think it's one of the great films of John Carpenter's whole filmography. But when it came out, it was not a hit. Just being objective. It was not a hit. So making a sequel to that film is easier than making a sequel to 
say, the Godfather. Now, of course, I managed to pick a rare example where the sequel is considered as good as the first one and by some better. I think I would put myself in the equal to category. I don't think it's better because I think The Godfather is a truly amazingly made film. I mean, it really is something. But I think it's, it is fair to say, and I would agree, that two is within the, the, the same realm of quality. So we'll put it like that, okay? Oh, I just realized I missed a red spot there. Let's get that fixed right this second. I see it right there. I don't know if you can see that. It's right there. And we need to take this out. Oh, unless it was there and I just had it covered. That could be too. So, making a sequel to Godfather 2 easier. Or, sorry, uh, tougher. Making a sequel, sorry about the other Making a sequel to RoboCop 2, which is what RoboCop 3 would be, because essentially you're being compared to the last film. You know, people wouldn't go into it. Now, where is that line coming from? I gotta find that. It's here. No, it's not there. Where is that? Where are you? Where are you coming from? No. Oh, is it a... I think some of the white is missing. Let's see. Yep, it is. Okay. So, coming off of RoboCop 2 and making RoboCop 3, it's less of a distance to go to make a good movie. But nonetheless, it's not a good movie. Again, I want to just make sure I'm very clear on this. I am in no way suggesting that RoboCop 3 is a good movie. But, but, RoboCop the remake... I think, sorry, I got about the yell. I think I have to consider it worse. I think I have to consider it worse because it was redoing the first movie. Okay? Whereas the sequels, you know, this, this is a time where sequels were trying to do something different and take the, the franchise, if they were, in most cases anyway, they were attempting to take these movies in different directions. And I think, say what you want about RoboCop 2 and 3. And I know people people say RoboCop 2 just redoes the first movie. I, I still disagree with that. I just fundamentally disagree with that. Just because there are parts that are similar and that they do recycle some story beats, that doesn't mean it's, a, it's not a remake. It's not. Sorry, it isn't. But it then went off in its own direction. It wasn't, again, nearly as successful as the first one. It's very hard to be as good as a classic. We've seen many examples of that. But I would still say that, you know, in even three, even three, and this is where it's like, ooh, even three, it did something different. Pardon me, sorry. Ooh, that was a big one. I didn't like what three did. I don't think most people liked what RoboCop 3 did. It was, I mean, it is awful, but you can't say, you really can't say that it just redid the first movie. There were no ninjas in RoboCop 1. There were no jetpacks in RoboCop 1. Uh, RoboCop was, I believe in 3, doesn't he replace his arm with a machine gun? Am I just misremembering that really bad detail? I don't think I am. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that happened. And even if it did, the jetpack is awful. They didn't have Peter Weller. Yeah, there's so many ways where three falls apart, but again, it wasn't just re redoing RoboCop 1. It was attempting to forge its own path. And so that's the reason why I would say that I think <laughs> As somewhat incredible as it is to say this, even to me to say it, I think that RoboCop 3 is a better movie than the RoboCop remake. Not in terms of quality. The RoboCop remake is a much better movie in terms of its production, but it really didn't do anything interesting with the concept. You know, it, it, the only difference is they had some bigger actors and... I mean, the biggest thing, the biggest detour it took was that it took a sort of mean joke and mean, not mean as in towards the audience, but mean within the movie. It took kind of a very callous, funny bit 
which is not really funny when you think about the what the what values it represents. But there's a part if you've never seen the original RoboCop, and I don't think it's spoiling anything to say that Peter Weller becomes RoboCop. He was not always a robot or a cyborg to be technical. He was a cop, and he got killed, and they put him into robo the, a robotic cybernetic body. Okay. Just on the off chance there are people who've never seen RoboCop. There, I'm sure those people exist. And maybe they're watching. If they are, oh, I think I do have to sneeze. I'm going to mute so I don't sneeze. Yep, because I'm going to sneeze. Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. Oh, man. That would have been very loud. So I'm glad I was able to mute in time. Um, yes, so Alex Murphy, which is the character that Peter Weller portrays in RoboCop, uh, is killed in the line of duty, but it just so happens that when he dies, there is a experimental program that is attempting to create a, you know, a, a RoboCop, a cybernetic police officer, because in the, the future of the movie, or the world of the movie, I don't even know how far in the future it's supposed to be, in that world, crime has gotten really bad in Detroit, and ordinary police officers are simply not able to keep up with it. And so this is an idea that, that's, that a company called Omni Consumer Products comes up with. The idea of robotic or enhanced police officers. And Alex Murphy becomes the first successful cybernetic cop. Oops, that's an eraser. I don't want the eraser. That's the premise of RoboCop. So, you know, I guess if you've never seen it, I, I spoiled the very beginning for you. And I really didn't because there's lots of details I didn't cover in there. But anyway, that's the first movie. The second movie is takes place sometime after. I don't really know how long after it's supposed to take place, to be honest. I don't know if they ever gave a year. It's not too far after because the person who was in charge of OCP was played by, I know his last name's O'Hurley. He was the bad guy from Halloween 3. And in this, in and he plays the chairman of the board, the CEO, whatever. I don't know if they give the title. They always just call him the old man. He doesn't even have a name. He's just referred to as the old man. But in the first movie, he's not young. Hence the nickname, the old man. I mean, he is, he is an older, I don't know if I can really guess what the actor's age was, but I want to say, I mean, he might have been a very good-looking 60, possibly. But I would also have no trouble believing he was in his 70s. Again, I don't, I don't you know, it's not like it's ever important to the story, so you don't ever like, give him a birthday party and say happy whatever birthday. But in the first movie, he's not a young man. And in the second movie, he's still in charge and he looks relatively the same age. So I always just figure that the movie, the second movie, takes place pretty much real time as far as when the second film was made. Meaning if they made the sequel five years later, well, then this movie takes place five years later. And in the movie, the, the big, the city that they were trying to build, which in the first film is called Delta City, well, that hasn't gone so well. We don't really know what happened, but this, you know, utopian corporate controlled city never came to pass. I, I can't imagine how a, a corporation could not be able to do something that has the public's interest at heart properly. That's, that doesn't seem like it lines up with reality, does it? But anyway, Delta City is either has failed or never happened. The movie's never really clear on which part of that it is. Instead, you now find out that, well, OCP's at it again, and now they want to build what they're calling New Detroit. So that's the replacement for Delta City is New Detroit. And since they're making a nice new city, they need to have a nice new shiny upgraded cop to go with it, a new RoboCop, RoboCop 2, as the movie calls it, which is, I think, very funny that they just on the nose say RoboCop 2 is the name of the product, as well as the movie. I like that. It's borderline stupid, but I like it. And so the second movie, the second movie basically tries to, now don't get me wrong, if we're just being objective about it, the second movie does recycle a lot of beats from the first one, 
but I wouldn't call it a remake. It just redoes certain elements of it, and that's okay. Most most sequels do. Most sequels do recycle some bits of what made the first movie good. It's how much they do and how much they do with those parts that really make it unique. I think RoboCop 2 comes close to being a good sequel. Not one that ever gets anywhere near the orbit of the first one, but still. It, it just fails in a couple places. But it remains a very fun movie. Whereas the RoboCop remake really didn't seem to have much to say in revisiting it. It just didn't seem like it was... There didn't seem to be a point. And that's the thing. That, to me, is the real backbreaker of a reboot or sequels if it has nothing to say. RoboCop 2 revisits the themes of the first one, but interestingly, I think it does it in a way that feels harsher in many respects than the first movie did, which is an extraordinary thing to say because it's not like the first movie. Paul Verhoeven is not known for his subtlety. It's just that simple. That this is Paul Verhoeven is not a director that when people talk about him, they say things like, yeah, you know, he, he plays things understated. No, 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 no. That's not Verhoeven's thing. Verhoeven is very, very interested in pushing a lot of boundaries of what you can show in a movie. Well known for it. And yet very liked by people who work with him. So certainly not a monster, just somebody who, he's not American. So he doesn't have some of the American fear, I would say, of putting things in movies that are going to make people uncomfortable. He has no issues delving into that, and he does. And I, I like a lot of his movies. Um, I haven't seen them all. I'm going to break for a quick drink of water here, because I am thirsty. One moment, please. I make an effort to drink silently. I don't want to be slurping or gurgling. So I, I do that for you, the, the viewers. So yeah, Ver Verhoeven is not uh, not known for shying away from things, and uh, often likes to be confrontational in his films. I think I, I I don't think he would disagree if for some reason he were able to hear this. I don't think he would disagree with that assessment. I think he would find that that's a pretty universal read of his stuff, which is why I tend to like it. Is because it 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 can be very direct without becoming uh, overdone or it still manages to have nuance even though it is nuance that is delivered through a, a sledgehammer. It still manages to be able to do things with a subtle touch and not go crazy. Which, by the way, is one of the places where the sequel can falter. There are points, that, multiple points in the sequel, as a matter of fact, where the movie goes too heavy-handed with what it's talking about. It makes it way, way too obvious, you know, what it what it's saying. Whereas there's other parts where it doesn't, and that's when it, that's when it becomes obvious that, hey, you guys didn't have to go this heavy with everything. You could have done things with a little bit of a softer touch, and it would have worked. Regardless, having said that, I think the movie's fun. I really, oh, wait a minute, I gotta fix that. That's not right. Hold on, where are we here? That's that's not right. Where? There we go. I gotta do a little bit of racing right there. That's better. Okay. So, you know, uh, but I still think two is really fun. It's a really fun movie. Just you know, like like much like Predator two, you just can't go. Oh, sorry, my comparison point. Uh, that's not whether I liked it or not. My comparison point was whether the remake or three are worse. And I think because the remake doesn't really try to do much of anything except use modern effects in many cases. And they get, and they left his arm on. Which again is sort of a... almost feels like a weird callback to the first movie because there's a point where when they are rebuilding Murphy into Robocop when they're converting him into Robocop there's a point where the Miguel Ferrer character, whose name is Bob Morton, comes in and says, why does he still have his left arm? 
And they said, oh, well, we were able to save it. And he's like, no, lose the arm. I want him to be a machine. And it's this very, very cold, callous, corporate moment. And then in the new movie, he keeps one of his arms. Or, yeah, I think it's his, if I remember, it's from his elbow down. He keeps one. And the thing is, that's dumb. And the reason that's dumb is it looks silly. And the only, the only reason I can think they would even do that was to be almost a response to the, the Bob Morton thing. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the worst kind of callback gag, but I don't think it's very clever. It didn't make me think, oh, that's, that's, that's cute. It made me think, that's, that's what you got out of the first movie, is that gag? Okay. And you know, like I said, it's it, look. If you like that RoboCop remake, good for you. Honestly, I, I don't I don't like to make people feel like they shouldn't like whatever they like. But I think if I had to choose which one to watch, I'd watch three and laugh at it before I'd watch the remake and be somewhat bothered by the fact that it doesn't really seem to know what it wants to say. That is to me worse. So, and I don't think many people would probably probably I'm alone on that one. I don't think most people are going to are going to say, "Yeah, you know what? RoboCop 3 is better than the remake." Because I mean, I'll I'll give the remake this. Its effects are sure a lot better than 3. Oh, that jetpack scene. Oh, that jetpack scene. That jet that, that jetpack scene will haunt you if you've never seen it. Look it up on YouTube. It's so bad in so many different ways. Just like RoboCop 3, but at least it was it was taking a swing at something. It didn't make any type of connection with what it was aiming for, but it took a swing. And I have to I do have to respect a movie that doesn't just play it safe. Which Robocop 3 did not. Did not play it safe. Whatever it did, it didn't play it safe. And that is something. Not enough for me to say it's a good movie. I can't go that far for you. But I do think I would prefer watching that over the remake just because I could laugh at it, whereas the remake, I think, would irritate me more. Because I feel like, unlike, say, Suspiria, which is a sensational remake, I bring that up every single time as here. If you're going to remake something, follow this model. This is the way to do a remake. That was the way to do a remake, and I love that movie. Both movies, I love them both. I think they're both really good in different ways. Okay, so the rings are done. Oh, do I want to put accent lines on the red X's or do I just want to leave it? You know what? I think I'm just going to leave it. I think it's good like that. Yeah, I can. Uh, let me just double check. I didn't miss anything, right? I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss any erase spots or anything like that because I'm going to merge these in a second. No, I think I'm actually good. I think I got it. All right, let's go ahead and merge those together. That's our ring shadow lines. Where are we at uh, stream-wise here? Where's the timer? Oh, 20 minutes, okay. Well, my goal was to be done with this, and I think the only thing I was thinking of doing, actually, I will, let's see. So if I restore the background so you can see the frame, there we go. Let's go down and let's put a new layer I was going to say, I should have at least one layer left because I just combined something. Let's move this down. Put this behind everything. Okay, so let's fold the colors down. What are these? Oh, these are those. Um, well, I think, I'm, I think I'm good at this point, so I don't need that. What's this? That's the... All right, we'll leave that. We'll put that into... This should be in line work. So I'll put it down here this down here. There we are. Because that should be considered. Oh, line work. Okay. Now, let's see what we got brush-wise. We have, I, do I have a Kirby Crackle brush? I don't know if I do. Uh, Kirby Crackle, if you don't know what that is, and probably if you don't know comics or, or illustration, you might not. Kirby Crackle is a very specific type of circular pattern that, oh, I can show you, let me show you. Let me grab, so the color I want is something like that. Okay, so Kirby Crackle 
the way you most commonly see it is, let me grab a paintbrush because it'll be easiest, I think. Okay. Is something like this. Let me just do an ellipse, right? And you would see that. And you would see these, and I could, I, I mean, I could literally draw all these, I guess. I could. You would see these all scattered around, and they're indicators of power, like that you're emanating some kind of power. And so Kirby Crackle would be on the outside of, you know how the, the flame has the inner and outer colors? You know, the inner color is usually like yellow, and then the outer gets orange and red-ish. Kirby Crackle will be the red part, and what's in, in the ring of the crackle is what would be the, the brightest and, and most intense part of the flame. Never thought I would be comparing Kirby Crackle to Flame, but for where we are. So, I would have thought one of these would have it. Maybe not. No, no. Pfft, skulls. It's hysterical. Uh, I may not have a brush that does that. Which is fine if I don't. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, I don't. These are actual stars. Is that what those are? Well, those are pixelated, but that's kind of that's kind of the idea. Is you know, if you have the center, and then all this stuff would be outside of it, and the center would be the all these circles here would be in that outer bit there. I don't know if I that was probably a terrible explanation. Yeah, that's the pixel thing. That's why. I don't know, maybe I will just do it by, oh God. Doing this by hand will take a long time. And Kirby Crackle often is, it, it's largest on the outsides and then it kind of becomes smaller as you go in. And it's usually all the same color, usually. The sizes vary greatly, so that's where you see a lot of differentiation. Ugh, if I do this by hand, this is gonna take forever. You know what, I wonder if somebody makes a Kirby Crackle Let's take a quick look. There are so many Procreate brushes. Brushes. Kirby. Crackle. Procreate. Brush. I would think somebody would make it, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Free Kirby Crackles. Uh, here we go. Here's a bundle. This has got a pretty good rating. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, oh wow, yeah, this has got this pack's got a lot of brushes. Interesting. Hello. Okay, I just want to look at them. Can I look at them, please? Clip Studio Paint. Oh, Procreate. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. I can't really zoom on it very well, but yeah, that's it. Somebody does have one. Interesting. How much do they want for this thing? Ten bucks, huh? Well, it's for Affinity, Clip Studio, Paint, Photoshop, and Procreate. 24 brushes for each program. That's not unfair. Yeah. Um, okay. Yep. Um, I'm buying this very quickly in the background, so bear with me a minute. Uh, let's see. I think, that, I think that's a fair deal for that. I think it's good. So let's go ahead and uh, let's pay with a card. There we go. Yeah, I wasn't intending to go shopping on the uh, on the stream, so. Uh, but it is definitely going to be a lot a time saver to do it this way. Okay. Pay. And pay. Oh, blank this out. There we go. Pay. Oh, pfft. yeah. I didn't put the card number in. No wonder it's failing. Helps to put your. I'll just give you a, a free tip that's uh, money related here since we're on the stream and I'll, I'll make this about uh, what's the word for it? Uh, financial advice. If you're gonna buy something with a credit card, you're probably gonna have to enter the credit card number. So it's good to it's good to have that. Okay, so we're going to say, uh, let's see, where is the one for Procreate? Here it is, Procreate download. Okay, save. Excellent, excellent. And we will say, let's uh, go ahead. Here it is. Brush set. Open, or I want to save it. Let's do a copy. 
Uh, we will throw it into box. So I believe I have a Procreate Brushes. There it is, right there. I have a folder for this. And let's go, oh, you know what? I have to paste it first, I'm sorry. Paste. Uh, where is it? Did it, there it is. Okay, so now I go to box. This is thrilling, I know. This is just, this is just thrilling. And I'm going to say, no, you're, I mean, you're, you're seeing how I do things. And we will take the Kirby brush right there. Upload started. Completed. Perfect. Now we jump back. You won't see this because this is going to be... Oh, actually, hold on. You would see that. So let's let's just do this for a minute. Um, not that I think there's anything... I don't think I have to enter a password or anything, but just on the off chance. Uh, let's see. Procreate brushes. Come on, buddy. Kirby Crackle right there. Uh, that would be... So I click on it. Oh. oh, I just froze my whole thing. Hold on a minute. Preview not, no, I understand the preview's not available. I just want to be able to put it into, click this, opening, okay. And we want to open with Procreate, importing. And did it do it? Uh, it did, all right, excellent. All right, let's, uh, Turn that off. Okay, so here we have the Kirby Crackle brushes. See that? I'm gonna move them down because I put all my custom brushes down here. Just like to have them down there. All right, so there, th that first one's actually pretty good. So see this? That's it. That's Kirby Crackle right there. So now I'm gonna save a bunch of time that I would have spent doing that manually. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna just do, well, we'll do the big ones first, which would be on the ones on the outside here like this. Okay, well, hold on. Okay, I, I see how this brush is working. So we're gonna ring it a little bit on the outside like that. Ring this. Okay, we'll do this. These will be the, be the biggest ones. So there we go. And then we'll bring this down from, we'll go to like 15 maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Let's do a new layer just to Noticing color. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. See, you gotta. This is this is the careful bit. Is to try not to overdo it, which it's very easy to overdo it. Really, and this does not appear to have pressure sensitivity, so that makes it really tough not to make this just a complete nightmare. I mean, not that I mind it. I like the crackles, so it doesn't bother me if there's a lot. But you know, I am trying to keep it somewhat subtle. <laughs> I'm not doing the best job of that, but that's okay. That's how it goes sometimes. What is that? Why is there a line there? What is that from? Hold on. Well, it's in the color somewhere. My bed is. Is it the black layer? No. Where is that? What is that from? There it is. Jeez. Must have accidentally hit my finger on something. Okay. Let's go back to our crackle layer. Okay. Just keep doing this. There we go. Okay. We'll go to this one. That's better. No, not that one. Okay, so now we'll drop this even further. Oh, you know what? Let's see something. Yeah, see. That's interesting though. Huh. Bring the opacity back up, that's okay. Bring it down to five. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's too small. Let's go to like 10, maybe. Okay, 10. Yeah. It's a tricky thing with something like this, because I like the crackle, but I also don't want it to be a complete you know, nightmare of it. So let's, what if we go down to 50%? We go in the background here and just fill some of that in. Is that too much? Mm. I don't really love it, so I'll leave it like that. I think I went. I think I went too heavy. I think I went too heavy. So let's go ahead and delete that. Let's clear that. And let's try something. Let's go to 15. Actually, let's go to 25. And let's do this. Let's do, oops, 
uh, put the opacity back up. Oh, man. I gotta think of how to do this. Whoa, what? Oh. No, 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 no. Jeez. I accidentally tapped on the screen and started restoring things that I did. I get why it was doing it, but that's not what I was trying to do. What I'm trying to do is create a nice... Oval like that, okay. Like a frame. All right, that's not bad. Put a little bit more in here. We'll stay within that frame. Stay within the frame. Okay. Yep, I'm okay with that. I like that so far. Now we'll drop it down from drop it down to 15. Let's put a secondary layer, and we're going to drop the opacity down. Actually, no. Yeah, I don't need to do it there. I could do it on the actual thing when I'm done. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing again. Just kind of ring around this. Let's see where we are. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, I like that. I like that. And then I can drop the opacity of that down to say 50, wait, where is it? 50% maybe? There we are. Let's see. Yeah, that's not bad, I don't mind that. And then we'll drop it down even further to let's say 10. We'll do one more layer. And we'll do some fill-in stuff here. We're gonna drop the opacity on this, so it's not gonna matter. No, you know what, don't do it that way. Don't do it that way, sorry. Okay, there's a new layer. Redo the layer. Now let's do this. Here. And we'll do this. Yes! I like that. We'll fill in more. We'll fill in all through here. And that's going to look too heavy, because right now it is. But we're going to drop the opacity way down on that. And then we'll get some nice depth in there. Won't look as crowded. We'll still have some nice crackle effect. Okay, so now we're going to drop that opacity down to say 25% maybe. Yeah, there we go. No, I'm digging that. I like that. I like that. I think that that. Hmm. I'm gonna tell you what my one issue with this is. Oh, one issue is that you're not seeing my screen. Hold on. You saw it right up to that point, so actually you didn't miss much at all. It literally stopped right when I did the, huh. It stopped when I dropped the background out. That's really weird. Okay, so literally that's all you missed was me dropping the background. My one issue here, my one issue with this is, I don't like when I make images for shirts, which is what all my images end up. Well, not all. Many are intended to be shirts. I don't like them when they have harsh artificial lines, meaning that outside box. I don't like that. So. What I may do, well, what I'm gonna attempt, is I'm gonna go ahead and, I do like this outline. But, I'm gonna try something different. Here we go. Here's what we're gonna do. Because I'm intending this to be a shirt, right? I kind of have this idea to have the crackle behind his head. And that would look a lot better on a shirt than that outside box thing that I had there. Still conveys the power element, which is what I want, that he's a powerful being. Still want that very clearly communicated, but without an artificial box in there. You know what I mean? So I think this can do that now. It's gonna be the same idea. We're gonna bring the brush down to 15 now. And I'm going to bring the opacity of this layer down, oop, not that far, to 50%. 
tricky. And we're going to do some filling around it just to kind of punch out some, you know, accent pieces here. We're going to see little bits. Just making sure the screen didn't disappear again because I know it did before. I'm so keep an eye on it, but it looks like it's okay. check the background music level on these videos. I don't think anything should have changed because I imported all my OBS settings, but let's go check and make sure I don't want to be blowing people's ears out or making it hard to hear me. Not that I think anybody's going to miss anything if they don't hear me, trust me, but I should check that out. I keep meaning to, I keep forgetting that I'm using Streamlabs now. So I just like, oh, I know it's good in OBS, and I, a, and I don't think about the fact that I'm not using OBS. I'm using Streamlabs now. Which I'll admit, it hasn't crashed on me. My computer hasn't gone to sleep. Uh, the bug with the live thing, well, I couldn't get the three streams to work on OBS, so I can't really hold that against Streamlabs. At least it gets it to work. It might take a little bit more work, a little more effort on my part, but hey, it's working. So, whatever. I'm going to shut up about it. All right, and then we do one more layer. Oop, max limit. Okay, hold on. That's fine. I can combine some things. Let's see. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do a quick check of something. Yeah, these layers can... Actually, can these two combine? I'm betting these can combine. These don't touch. Merge down. Okay. Yeah, those are fine. Okay, so I need one more layer. One more... Okay, now we'll drop down to 10. 10, and we'll drop our opacity on this layer to 25. There we are. Okay. And we're just going to do a little bit of accent stuff. Oh, you know what I just realized? Oh, you know what? That's... Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't look bad. For a minute, I, I didn't realize I didn't put these layers behind them each other. But I actually don't like, I don't mind the way that looks. It looks all right. Because it's kind of painting over that former layer, but not terribly. I don't mind that, actually. I mean, I could do stuff like that, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I'll just stick with, you know. Just doing little accent bits. Just kind of having little flare out bits here. Just enough to suggest, you know, the power levels and all that. And I'll put some back here, obviously. So we fill that dead air or dead space in yeah there we are put a little bit back there just to fill that and we'll flare a little bit in there we'll have it right there just so you remember it's there also helps to accentuate the hair so that's good so this brush is this brush is worth the 10 bucks just for the use of getting out of it right here yeah, there's lots of Procreate, but I, I'm, I actually really like the fact that, that that person made a pack that works in lots of programs. Uh, what was it? Clip uh, Clip Studio, was it? Um, I never used that one. Uh, Affinity, which I've used a few times. Photoshop, which I use all the time. So it's great that that one thing created, had it had brushes, 24 brushes for each program. Because I like Kirby Crackle. Kirby Crackle's fun. But yeah, doing. could you imagine doing this all manually? I mean, I could have done it. And when I was younger, I would have had to if I wanted it. In fact, there is a picture I did of Keith Giffen that I did Kirby Crackle on. Uh, but not nearly this much because it would have taken me forever. So, it's great that you can find this stuff and that people make brushes for this program and the other programs. I'm really glad that I really like the fact that it was for all different programs. That's great. Because not everybody uses the same thing. And I don't think it's, you know, they should only have brushes for one thing or another. You should be able to use it on whatever you want that you can do your art how you want to do your art. Man, I think that's done. I think that's it. I think it's ready. I think that is ready. Oh, you know what? Actually, I do want to go to this layer. Go back to 25. Let's... Oh, that's fine. So I'll put like a couple of bigger ones here. Just to... yeah, just, just fill in a couple of spaces. I feel like there should be bigger stuff there. There we go. Just make sure I don't have any big gaps. And then I gotta go to this layer. Uh, drop down to 15. And I do wanna fill in this. Yeah, I don't want that to be. Just, yeah, just put 
put some in there just to yeah, that's much better much better yeah see it gives a little bit of texture variation that's good that's good yep that's what i wanted make sure i don't have any more holes anywhere doesn't look like i do that's it that's it this is done this is done and at the 50 minute mark so that's great so this image I will do one more kind of visual look at it, make sure I didn't miss any small areas, do cleanup maybe, but otherwise, this image is done. Bishop is finished. And it's a lot better than what I thought it was going to be. I am, I am very happy with how this turned out, so this is great. This turned out pretty much... Oh, you know what? Sorry, just back on. There we go. Uh... That's what I mean about little touch-ups. I'll just find little stuff like that. But overall, this is done. It's where I want it. It's, you know what? This one area here is a little bit empty, so I'm gonna just do a little bit more here. Just because I want it to kind of somewhat follow the hair. And let's just go, this is what I mean. This is always the way it is for me. Is I find little things, I'm like, oh no, just, just pop in this little accent. But this is minor, I mean, this is it is done. Just a little stuff like that. There. Very easy. Yep. That's how I want it. That's it. That's it. So let's go ahead and stop here. Because it turned out the way I wanted it to. I'm extremely happy about it. That's great. Very, very successful. I actually managed to finish an image in the stream where I said I was going to finish it. That's a rarity in itself. But that's great too. So, yeah. Yes, got the streams to work on all the channels, so that's a success too. So this has been overall a very good Monday stream. So, yeah. So like I said, I will not be streaming tomorrow on Tuesday if you're watching this live, and somebody is. There were two people at one point, so a couple people were. So I will not be doing the Tuesday stream. Thursday stream should be normal. Should be no problem there. So that should proceed as usual. But there will not be a, a Tuesday stream because I will be talking about Predator 2 probably for a couple of hours. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. That's going to be a, a lot of fun. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here for the evening. I want to thank you for stopping by and hanging out. Whether you're doing this live or later doesn't matter to me. I'm just appreciative that you come by at all. Got to see me play with some Kirby Crackle, which is good for everybody, because Kirby Crackle is great. And yeah, that's going to do it. So thank you for coming by. Hopefully it's not 103 degrees where you are, because it is here. Not now, it's more like 90 something now, but it was 103 earlier. I hope that it's not that bad where you are. So try to stay cool if it is. On that note, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this stream. And as I am now saying as my insert board of that language go experience some more creativity don't stop here go find somebody else who's drawing making music whatever go do something yourself creativity is good for you it's good for your mind your body and your soul so go be creative or if you can't be creative yourself go experience somebody else's creativity because it'll probably make you feel better and support them if you can a lot of these people i see doing streams and stuff like that they're independent and you know it's hard to make a career at this so if you can throw a couple dollars these people's way do it because a lot of them, it is the difference between them making rent or, you know, being able to get a meal and that type of thing. And it's not easy. And it doesn't get any easier. And it's not getting any easier. So support creative people that you enjoy. I'm not saying that for me. I'm saying that for people who need that support more than I do. Because it is a big deal for them. All right. On that note, uh, thank you for coming by and hanging out for a bit. And until the next stream, thanks for being here. And take care.